Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to module 6 of the course uh, Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. Uh, in this module we are discussing analytical methods to solve TDAC. Uh, there are two ways one can solve TDAC, of course one analytical method and another one is numerical method. But most of the solution will come from numerical methodology. However, uh, there are few, very few analytical methods available to solve TDAC. One of them we have already understood, it is time dependent perturbation theory. Uh, next what we will be uh, going over is, uh, is called uh, quantum adiabatic theory. Um, in this, uh, to, to present this quantum adiabatic theory, we uh, we will we will uh, make use of uh, the particle in one dimensional box problem. If we if we present the quantum adiabatic theory uh, in uh, along with this example of particle in one dimensional box, it will help us understand the fundamental uh, the principle of this uh, of this theory adiabatic theory uh, very easily. So we'll begin. Uh, we have already re realized that the solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation provides a set of stationary state wave functions represented by psi n. So, I, if I have this uh, time independent Schrodinger equation which is given by this we get actually, so when we solve time independent Schrodinger equation, we get the entire spectrum of the system, which means eigenstates of the system. And the nth eigenstate, let us say this one is the nth eigenstate, and that eigenstate can be um, has an inner uh, eigen uh, the wave function psi n and its energy. E n that is the energy and that is the way we get that is the inter spectrum of a quantum system is obtained from the solution of time independent Schrodinger equation. As an example one may consider the classic problem of particle in one dimensional box of length L. So, this is what we have the example 0 to L length we have and um, this problem is also known as particle in infinite square well potential. The stationary state the nth wave function the nth wave function stationary state of course these, these are all stationary states. they are stationary states because not because wave function does not have time dependence, but its probability density is time independent that is why it is stationary state. So, all the stationary state solutions we get from time independence Schrodinger equation and the nth wave function is given by this expression, the expression which is very well known to us because this is a very um, uh, frequently taught uh, problem. In, in quantum mechanics and uh, the energy states are following the first energy state is having energy this one, the second energy state having energy this one and we, 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 we go on like this way. So, when, when we represent the 
a stationary state wave function of the particle in one dimensional box. Um, here n can be 1, it can be 2, n can be 3, this is the quantum number and it can go up to infinity. So, all states can be uh, explored from this uh, wave function. Um, when we express the wave function following using this form, we assume that uh, mostly we probably have not noticed it, but we assume that the length this L term in this equation remains fixed. In fact, the L term acts as a parameter in, in this equation. This is why the nth stationary state wave function of the particle in one dimensional box should be more appropriately represented by this. We can use x then semicolon then l equals square root of 2 by l sin pi x n by l. What we are doing here to define the notation of this wave function what we have used is that we have used L as a parameter and anything we are writing as a parameter will be separated from the uh, variable, variable is the x coordinate here, uh, the, the position coordinate is the variable, uh, but the parameter is separated from the uh, variable by a semicolon, that is the convention will follow. So, if I have two parameters of a fine uh, two variables in a function let us say x and t are variables they are separated by comma, but then the parameter if I have a parameter in it. So, it will be separated by, uh, by a semicolon that is the convention we will follow. So, if we have uh, so, so more specifically this is not done very quickly uh, very frequently in, um, in the textbook the popular textbook when we represent uh, the one dimensional box problem uh, because it is assumed that L is constant. But more specifically and with regard to uh, the presentation of quantum adiabatic theorem we will actually uh, specify that this wave function parametrically depends on L. If I change the L my wave function will change but it is not a variable, it is parameter. So, if I have this wave functions written like this, then the time dependent wave function as we know this is time independent part. So, time dependent wave function can be written as follows. I have nth wave function as x comma t then parameter is equals is equal to uh, square root of 2 by L then sin pi x n by L. Then I have this time dependent phase factor which is e to the power i e n t by h cut. So, that is the that is the uh, uh, that is the way we should represent more uh, we, we can maintain the notational accuracy with the help of this where E n denotes the energy of the nth stationary state of the particle. So, what we see from this expression is that the time dependence comes entirely from and this is this is the way this is what we have uh, this is a concept which we have developed so far that the time dependence comes from this time dependent phase factor. The time dependence of the wave function comes from this time dependent phase factor and this is what we have developed since um, module 1. Now, in, in all the hitherto treated time dependent problems we have assumed that the parameter what was the assumption we have made so far always the parameter which defines which defines a stationary state
wave function for example here it is the L in this example and that is why we are when you will be representing quantum adiabatic theorem we will be giving an example so that one can directly connect the meaning of the mathematical expressions or the statement which we are making that will be that, uh, that this will make our learning process very easy going. So, uh, so far in all the treatment what we have done uh, time dependent treatment we have assumed that the parameter which defines the stationary state wave function um, does not change does not change as a function of time. This is this is the assumption we have made. So, the time dependence term in the wave function comes entirely from this phase factor. This is what we have seen. On the contrary, when we are presenting this quantum adiabatic theorem, we will say that this part is not right. We will say that quantum adiabatic theory um, which is the subject of the um, current discussion, it will try to find an answer to, uh, to an unexplored question. The question is following, question is what will happen if the parameter which defines a stationary state wave function changes very slowly as a function of time. So, in uh, time dependent perturbation theory when we have employed time dependent perturbation theory, we have assumed that the stationary state the parameter which is defining the stationary state is not changing. So, entire time dependence came from the time dependent phase factor, but on the contrary to this picture when we are presenting this quantum adiabatic theorem this is also another dynamical evolution of a quantum system we are saying that we are asking this question that what will happen if the parameter which defines a stationary state wave function changes very slowly. So, one approximation is that the change has to be very slow, the parameter which is changing has to be very very slow. Then we will be able to explore this quantum adiabatic theorem. If it is fast then we cannot explore quantum adiabatic theorem. But if it is slow, then it is good. So, quantum adiabatic theorem, quantum adiabatic theorem is actually based on an approximation that is called adiabatic approximation. Adiabatic approximation assumes that the parameter is changing very slowly. So, we our our target is not time dependent phase factor, our target is actually the parameter which is changing as a function of time very slowly. And um, this slow temporal change, this is an approximation in quantum adiabatic theorem, this is called quantum adiabatic approximation. Quantum adiabatic approximation. So, we will under this approximation, so if we come connect it to our example, we will say that at time t equals 0 initial time the length was L 0 and it is slowly changing the expanding the box and at time t uh, uh, it, it, uh, the final time is t. So, the duration of the adiabatic change, 
So, the duration of adiabatic change of when I say adiabatic change it is a slow change adiabatic change is 0 to t during this time and quant the aim of quantum adiabatic theorem is at exploring the wave function after the adiabatic process is turned off. So, that is the that is the, uh, the, 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 the problem we have at hand. The Hamiltonian of a particle, um, particle in one dimensional box of length L let us say is given by this we have kinetic energy and the potential energy. I have deliberately given potential energy term here because um, although generally this is we write as 0 because particle inside the box the potential energy is 0 outside the box potential energy is infinite. So, that is why we make it 0, but we cannot directly write on 0 we will say that it has a potential function which will be defined like this way V this is more specific definition to maintain the notational accuracy. We, we, can, we can already see that the potential I am writing it has x dependence uh, as a variable and it has a parameter dependency L that is why they are separated by a semicolon. So, what we are saying is that this V would be the defining condition of the potential for the free particle in the box is given by V would be 0 when x for all x less than equals to 0 to L. So, it has to be uh, greater than equals to 0 to 0 and less than equals to L and this is going to be infinite plus infinite otherwise. So, this is the definition we are giving. So, we are we are not um, usually from uh, if you if, when uh, the popular um, uh, quantum chemistry books they present particle in one dimensional box problem they directly take this V to be 0. We are also taking V to be 0, but we are explicitly writing down to maintain the notational accuracy. Th this notations needs to be clearly written to understand this quantum adiabatic theory. Otherwise, things can be little confusing for the uh, for, for the for the for a person who is learning this theory for the first time. So, what we are writing is that this is the defining condition of the potential where uh, the potential is actually 0 inside the box and outside the box it is the infinite plus infinite. We have included this L term here to maintain the notational accuracy here. In general this is not done actually in the uh, popular quantum mechanics books because they assume that L is constant and also V is 0 we di directly write it down like that way. The defining condition of the potential term which I have written here uh, mandates the fact that the particle remains completely free inside this box. So, inside the box it will be completely free it is a free particle, but is it confined within the box outside the box you have potential infinite potential that is why this infinite potential it prevents it uh, it, it pre this infinite potential prevents it is its escape from the box, box. So, the particle cannot go outside the box like this way because of the infinite potential. Now, for the demonstration of quantum adiabatic theory using particle in one dimensional box problem we assume that this L, L, this L changes as a function of time very slowly. So, it is a slowly expanding box and this slow expansion this is the adiabatic uh, adiabatic approximation that is why it is called adiabatic um, uh, theory quantum adiabatic theory. 
as a result the defining condition of the potential. So, what is what is L? L is actually controlling the defining condition of the potential. It is the defining it is the defining condition of the potential and that defining condition is also changing because L if it if the L is changing the dimension of the box is changing. So, potential the behavior of the potential is also changing slowly of course and because potential is changing and then if we look at the energy expression for particle in one dimensional box uh, we see that if L is changing as a function of time then En the in nth energy state will also change very slowly and because uh, L, if L is increasing that means for the expanding box energy is slowly going down for the for the same nth excited state uh, sorry for the same same nth um, energy level of the of the particle. So, these are the um, facts which one can um, immediately uh, conclude uh, from this uh, from this expanding box problem employing this quantum adiabatic theorem where adiabatic approximation is the slow expansion of the box. Now, here we may assume that the adiabatic process of slow temporal change of length L of the box is turned on. So, what we will do the assumption is that the, the process of adiabatic change the process of adiabatic change is turned on at t equals 0 that is the initial time it was turned on and then the same thing is turned off at a later time t. t can be uh, anything I mean you one can choose what kind of t one would like to have. So, T has um, it is an arbitrarily chosen uh, time later time. So, uh, it is turned off at T and the entire uh, so, if, if it is turned off at T then what happens the the, uh, the wave function the psi n wave function nth uh, eigenstate wave function of the particle we said that it has a temporal uh, phase factor e to the power i e n t by h cut. It has a temporal uh, phase factor. Now, now the the time it's, it's it's evolving from zero to t time because it is evolving from zero to t time in its stationary state. So this is the in its stationary state. in its stationary state um, uh, this in its stationary state wave function psi n due to this adiabatic expansion which is occurring from 0 to t after immediately after the uh, adiabatic process is turned off the I will call this to be uh, at time t when just I have turned off the adiabatic process and I am trying to find out what is the um, nature of the uh, nth stationary state of wave function then that would be that will have an accumulated phase total accumulated phase which should be given as exponential of minus i by h cut 0 to t e n t dash d t dash. I am just separating this integration variable from its limit. So, that is why we have used t dash. So, what is the basic idea? Because uh, when this adiabatic change is occurring the parameter itself is changing the parameter controls E n and if the parameter is con uh, controlling E n during the uh, during the time this 0 to t time interval during which the adiabatic change is going on 
an instantaneous time. So, for in, in this duration an instantaneous time at instant time t dash any t instantaneous time t dash within this time interval during which the the energy E n would depend on that time. At that time at, at that t dash time what is my energy that that, um, that that is defined already by this expression this is going to be um, this is going to be n square pi square h cut square divided by 2 m then l t dash square. So, at that time what would be the length? That length will decide what would be the energy state for the nth eigenstate, the energy of the nth eigenstate. So, and, and it is evolving from 0 to t that is why total accumulated phase has to be of this factor is the total accumulated phase. And because this, this, this phase is accumulated by the nth uh, stationary state in the end, we can write down the nth stationary state as follows. Nth stationary state is actually the nth stationary state at the uh, at, at that particular time. So, if I if I consider at t time the uh, adiabatic process has turned off. So, this is the this is the time when it is turned off and this is the time when it was turned on and any time in between is the t dash time. So, uh, at the time uh, immediately after the adiabatic process is turned off at that time if I try to find out the wave function of the nth eigenstate of the particle it is going to be this where I have this um, total accumulated phase given by this one. So, the wave function each uh, nth um, eigenstate wave function is accumulating a temporal total temporal phase and that is given by this this expression. Now, uh, the task the overall task the, the task of the quantum adiabatic theory is to determine the state of the quantum system the wave function immediately after the process of adiabatic length change is turned off that is when the box adapts the length lt. So, so the entire task of quantum adiabatic theorem is to determine the state which is nothing but the wave function I need to find out the wave function at this time the, the wave function of the system. So, psi t this is what I have to find out psi t at, at time t immediately after the adiabatic change has been turned off what is the wave function of the system. What wave function is representing the current system immediately after the 
adiabatic change is turned off. And we can remind ourselves that we have already seen that for each um, 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 nth state uh, with function that can be expressed already we have understood that can be expressed as this L is actually depends on T at that time that depends on uh, psi n x L T. So, it has accumulated some kind of um, minus i by h cut 0 to t e n t dash d t dash. So, this much temporal phase it has already accumulated due to the adiabatic change. So, each one has accumulated and we have to understand how to express the final wave function at that time. One may say that the final wave function is given already here. This is not the final wave function. This is each state how it is behaving. We do not know what will happen to the particle after the expansion, whether it will stay in the same state or it will go to some other states we do not know. So, this only information we have is that the state, uh, each available state is accumulating some energy uh, to, um, accumulating um, the, the uh, certain temporal phase already. Each state is accumulated has accumulated temporal phase and uh, we have to find out what would be the final uh, wave function, the total wave function of the system. Now, this is this is what we are going to uh, clarify here. When the, we will just look at the general consequence of a temporal change of an Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian depends on L. So, uh, it depends on L because it depends on the V and V has a parameter which is L. That is why Hamiltonian depends on the parameter. So, this is the parameter which is controlling the Hamiltonian. So, we are talking about only parametric cha the change in the parameter. So, when we, when we are looking at the general consequences of temporal change of an Hamiltonian, um, before the expansion of the box, let us assume that the particle was in the ground state. So, this is the particle which I am showing and the circle is showing the population, is the full population I have in the, um, in, uh, uh, in the ground state. The, the circle, the diameter showing what kind of population I have. Let us say diameter is, th this, this entire diameter is actually representing population equals 1. So, entire population of the particle is on the ground state and its energy is given here at L equals 0 time. Yeah, the length is L, L0 we are specifying and that is why um, the, it is in the ground state. Now, what ground state of what? Ground state of ground state of which Hamiltonian? Hamiltonian H0 or specifically if we want to be notationally very correct then it is going to be H then X then parameter L 0. That is the, that's the uh, Hamiltonian we have. So, at t equals 0 the Hamiltonian would be h 0 and for that h 0 I will have this equation. So, h 0 will have psi 0 equals e 0 psi 0. Here I am just not mentioning the coordinate space here all are all depends on coordinate space as well uh, except for e. Uh, but it has a parameter. So, that parameter dependency I am looking at. So, before the adiabatic change occurred, it has the, um, I from this TDAC, I will be able to get different states and we are saying that in the ground state, it is present, uh, the particle is present in the ground state. Now, after the expansion of the box, it may so happen, this is a quite, quite general consequence we are writing. It may so happen that the particle is no longer staying in the ground state anymore. 
it may so happen the general consequence of this kind of adiabatic uh, this kind of ha the change temporal change of hamiltonian the temporal change of the parameter which controls the hamiltonian is following the particle may not be staying in the ground state anymore it may so happen that the there is a probability or population in the ground state there is a probability in the excited states like this and now the diameters are showing relative diameters are showing what kind of population I have then total this one plus this one plus this one total probability is one definitely but now due to this change Hamiltonian change of Hamiltonian it is not necessary that it is an adiabatic change so far we have not concluded what will happen if it is adiabatic change we are just saying that if it is a change then then gen, change of the Hamiltonian then the general consequence is that the particle may not be staying in the ground state it can go to, uh, the, to the excited state as well and there can be a development of population in states other than the ground state of the final what is the ground state final HT. So, for final HT I will have this TIAC time independence Orringer equation which is this t this is the final and uh, we have this n n e n here also we have n n so this is the uh, the time independence Orringer equation at time t immediately after the adiabatic expansion has started off and just before the adiabatic expansion uh, was initiated at that time TIAC is given by this. So, if I solve this equation at that time there will be an L for that L if I solve it I will be able to get different energy states and those energy states may have certain population because of the change temporal change of the Hamiltonian this is the very uh, general concept of temporal change of Hamiltonian. Now when the Hamiltonian of a quantum system changes as a function of time uh, in principle the, uh, the, the particle which was present in the nth discrete non-degenerate uh, stationary state of initial H0 so this is the Hamiltonian uh, may undergo the transition and in that case there can be development of probability of finding the particle in states other than that uh, nth discrete non-degenerate stationary state of final HT. So, when I say final HT more specifically it is actually H then X then semicolon L T that is the that is the Hamiltonian. So, for this particular Hamiltonian I will be able to get um, um, different states and it may so happen that these states are um, populated in a certain way. Thus, the temporal evolution of Hamiltonian creates a non-stationary state of the particle. So, it is quite clear that because Hamiltonian is changing as a function of time the state is a non-stationary state and non-stationary state of a particle we know that any non-stationary state of the particle. So, in the previous slide in the previous slide we said that we have to find out psi t this is actually non-stationary state uh, wave function non stationary state wave function the particle can actually be in the non-stationary state after the expansion it is it may not be the in the stationary state that is the general consequence of any time evolving uh, system because the system is evolving in time and whenever the uh, system is evolving in time the system cannot stay in the stationary state these are stationary states this stationary state um, this is a stationary state at time t which means at for a particular length of the box this is a stationary state. But particle because of this expansion because of this possibility of development of the population in different states um, the states which is defined by H t now uh, because of this development of this population one can say that the uh, 
particle is not in a stationary state anymore, it is in a non-stationary state which is defined by psi t. And this non-stationary state we know that it can be represented as a linear combination of the stationary state at time t. So, all the stationary states uh, at that time whatever I can get those stationary states I can collect uh, with a with its corresponding phase factor and then linearly combine them to get the non-stationary state. This is a very common approach to solve TDSE. What is the what is how do you solve TDSE? This is something which you should remember because any time for an unknown system if we want to solve some dynamical uh, problem the problem should be viewed like this way. First uh, and this is the, this, this approach is called Soringer's approach. So, we will use this approach very common approach to solve the dynamical problem. Uh, this is called Soringer's approach. So, what we do here is that first we solve T i s e. If I solve the T i s e which means the T i s e before the time evolution. So, uh, the, 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 this is the, the, by solving this T i s e I get stationary states of the system before the dynamical event is initiated which means I can call it it is at t equals 0 time. So, at t equals 0 or before t equals 0 when the dynamical event uh, is not initiated yet I have to what we have to find out I have to find out all possible stationary states ok. Then after the dynamical events has initiated, once the dynamical event has initiated, then we cannot say that the particle or the system in a stationary state, it is going to be in the non-stationary state and the non-stationary state is given by psi n x e to the power minus i e n t by h cut linear combination of all stationary states with its own phase factor and expansion coefficient that is the way we get that non-stationary state and this is called trial wave function this this is called Ansage or trial wave function. This is the wave function which is representing the uh, non-stationary state. But because C n is unknown and we know that C n the, uh, the, the square of absolute value of C n will give me the population in nth state, a non-stationary state. Uh, can have uh, several population in different states. So, before the dynamical event started I may have population only on the single state, but during the dynamical uh, the, 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 the dynamical event when it is going on at that time the population it can occupy different places the it can have population in different levels. I can have population here I can have, but total population is going to be 0 uh, sorry 1, but I can have population development in different states and that is called non-stationary state. And in order to express that state I need to know the population and that population can be obtained by inserting this wave function trial wave function to the TDSE. TDSE is equals h psi x t. 
we have to insert that to get this uh, population. And once we get the population, then what will happen? We will be able to um, uh, define what what is the non-stationary state. This non-stationary state will be defined in terms of stationary states. But I need to know the population, relative population for each uh, non-stationary -station, uh, state, which is defining the non-stationary state. Now. Um, this is a very general approach to uh, solve any dynamical problem with the help of TDSM. Uh, only difference here is that uh, the same thing is happening here also. Uh, we are saying that we started with the ground state and at t equals 0, it evolved up to t, t equals t time. And due to this evolution, I may have population in different states. The states are now defined by this H T Hamiltonian and but the overall state, overall physical state of the particle, not quantum state, physical state of the particle is given by now psi t which is a non-stationary state which will be expressed in terms of linear combination of the stationary states defined by this H T. So, same idea we are implementing only difference is that here uh, we have assumed that E n does not change previously we have assumed. But here in the problem we know that E n is changing as a function of time. So, the total accumulated phase cannot be just e to the power this, but e to the power uh, exponential of minus i by h cut 0 to t. E n t dash d t dash. That is going to be the total uh, phase accumulated by the nth, this nth stationary state of H t. So, with this consensus, we will move on and we will look at the uh, problem which we have the non-stationary state of the particle. So, basically what we are go doing here before expansion of the box, the particle is in in stationary state and this state is defined by the Hamiltonian H0. But after the expansion of the box, the state is not a stationary state anymore. The particle is in non-stationary state. So, I have to express it like this way and that non-stationary state we, we have said that following Sorringer's approach can be expressed in terms of linear combination of C n t, then psi n t, then e to the power minus i by h cut total accumulated phase up to time t e n t dash d t dash. That is going to be the non-stationary state at this time immediately after the expansion has uh, is, 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 is over. So, so, one key point which you should remember that before the expansion definitely particle was in the stationary state. Here we are assuming that it was in ground, ground state that is why the stationary state can be defined as psi 1. In the psi 1 stationary state it was there. But after the expansion because the Hamiltonian has uh, evolved over the time it is a dynamical event the particle has to be in the non-stationary state particle cannot be in the stationary state. Immediately after the, the entire change is turned off immediately after that. And that non-stationary state will be defined with the help of the stationary states at that time. And the stationary states at that time will be defined by H t that is the stationary state. So, those stationary states I have to collect and then plug that in here. So, this stationary states are obtained like this way E T n psi n t. 
So, this is this is the wave function which is representing the stationary state at that time and this stationary state we have given and the contribution of each stationary state is given by this expansion coefficient the contribution to the total non-stationary state. So, the key information here we should remember that that non-stationary state is prepared actually after the expansion. We will um, continue this session in the next class.